All right, I know I take him in everything. He's probably getting sick of it. It's like this girl again. No, no, I love it. I love it. I see. I can see your passion. I love Insta stalker. Insta stalker. Hater. Hater. <laughs> no, I absolutely love your voice, your music. I'm excited to see what else is coming. Hell of an angel. Hell on an angel. Yeah, that's Hell like on a knife. Nice. <laughs> so that was released as an EP first, right? And then you're re-releasing re, re, re it as an album. No, it, it's it been a full album the whole time. Now, I did have an EP a long time ago that's like, I just don't let anyone hear it, so it pretty much like don't exist. <laughs> but No, yeah, so Hell on an Angel is a full record, 10 songs. Okay, because I know that we had the few songs, and then all of a sudden it was like pre-order, the yeah, full. Yeah, so what happened was uh, we just released some before before we released the record. Yeah, we released um, a couple singles. And st instead of just releasing one or two, we released like three or four. Yeah, which is awesome. It's Simple, I think, is the one I came across first, yeah. which is that, that reminder that we all need. Like you said, just keep it simple. It's yep. there's, What was going on? Did you write that one, or is that one that yeah, I, brought to you? Yeah, I wrote that one like uh, so it been four years ago. I wrote it with three of my buddies, and one of them's from a small town in Georgia, other one small town Oklahoma, other one Maryland and Kentucky. Grew up in both places. Uh, going back and forth to small towns, and we were just having the conversation about, uh, you know, how fast life can be in the in the city. I, at that point, I lived in Nashville for a couple of years, and I was really getting a taste of what's really not even that big of a city, but I was still getting a taste. I mean, way different than, than where I grew up. So, so we were just kind of. I was just talking. We were talking about how simple it is back home, and, and uh, that song is a total blessing. Well, I'm like, it's it's just that. Everybody needs that. You need to take it back a step. I think we all live in this crazy yep. life, and it's just that reminder. I know I need it every once in a while. I'm like, play that one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, moving on. All right, country women. Tosh gives me a hard time because this is my self-proclaimed theme song. Oh, I like that. You got the yees going on back there. <laughs> I thought I was in Kentucky for a second. I don't know. Whoa. See, come on. We're not that bad in California. <laughs> and then you said John Party wrote that one? John Party wrote that. Now, he's our local favorite out here. That's, he's a California boy. He grew up yep. right down the road from yep. me. So I yep. didn't even know that. Yeah, John Party wrote that song. He, for whatever reason, didn't put it on any of his albums. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know why, but maybe it was meant for me. I don't know. It was. But but he said uh, he said I'd love for Dylan to hear that song, and I I said well I kind of want to you know I'll listen to it, but I kind of want to put all my own songs on my own. And when I listened to it, it was undeniable for me. I said <laughs> I have to record that song. And so John was, he he is just uh, he's a character. He you know I. <laughs> I really enjoy hanging out with that dude, and also I really enjoy his songwriting. His yeah. songwriting is incredible. No, it's crazy. I know I have used to remember going to parties in high school and being like, who is this kid? Like, everywhere you go, he's singing. So, really? Yeah. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. Taking it back. <laughs> I love being a, been a fly on the wall. Your debut single, and that just hit radio, and last I saw it was number two most added song yeah. yesterday. Yeah. That's, yeah. I don't even know. I, for you know, I, so I, when I when I moved to Nashville, when I moved to Nashville, it was like so the songs I was writing and the clothes I wore and pretty much 360 degrees of my whole entire being was like that's not gonna work. <laughs> so it, I mean, it, that still there's still part of that, you know, just spending all that time in Nashville and hearing that over and over again. There's still part of that. And I didn't want, I didn't know, I didn't want to do anything else. I didn't know, really didn't know how to do anything yeah. else. And, uh, and so I think the song is a great fit and I think timing is good. And, uh, but it's just like to hear that, it's just mind boggling to me because, because it's, yeah, I just, that's amazing. I feel like I won an award or something. Like, oh my gosh, second most added song, you know? You know what? I saw that and I was like, oh, he's coming tomorrow. Yes. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Oh, of course, and that's definitely going to be a song that we all hear at weddings from here on out. <laughs> yep. I hope so. It's going to be lots of first dances. <laughs> well, I mean, and the, the, another thing is, is too, is that I never, um, I, I've never been a love song guy, yeah. <laughs> and and that day I got in the zone and I wrote that song. It's so special, and being the first single and potentially, if everything goes as planned, my first hit. What a shock! Because I've I've always been 
I've always just been loved the whole rebel thing and all that kind of stuff. And the love song not my style, but I'm gonna tell you what, I works. love it. I love it. And uh, and it's crazy how it ended up being that way because my uncle was one of the kings of love songs. You know, John Michael Montgomery is my mom's brother, and so he sings "I Swear" yeah. and "I Love the Way You Love Me" and all that stuff. So it's just kind of funny. <laughs> it's just a funny coincidence. Going back to the roots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I was excited yesterday. You posted something about the Spotify for the vine the signed vinyl. So yeah. I'm super pumped that you're releasing that on vinyl as oh, well. Oh yeah, it's a, that's the only way. It's, it's going to be way. awesome to hear it you on vinyl. You can't release an album yeah. and not put it on vinyl. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I have to ask you, what is it that you ate the other day that... Oh, that was a scorpion. It was a scorpion. Yeah, I ate a scorpion yeah. yesterday. <laughs> Why? I'll tell the story. So, so I'm, not a big, I'm not a big drinker, but we... Uh, because of the thing we talked about having the second most added song thing, it was like, that's a means for celebrating. So we go and we have like some chips and queso and stuff. And then I, we were talking about this bottle up on the shelf and there was something, a little brown thing down in the bottom of it. And I said, what is that? And we were just kind of passing it back and forth and looking at it. It's a scorpion, about that long. And this, and this, uh, it's called a, uh, me Mexcal, Mezcal. And uh, and so I said, yeah, it's a real scorpion. The bartender did. I said, I said, get that. We fry them things up in Kentucky. Get that thing out. Pull it out. I'm gonna eat it. You know, I was just joking with the guy. You know, I was joking. It was a joke. But you know what? He pulled that thing out. We got to talking about something else. Change the subject. I don't forgot I even said that. And here he comes with this glass and nothing in it but a scorpion. And I said, well, he done went through the work to get this thing out now. So you want to hear something crazy? He pulls it out. He gives it to me. And I go, Tara, y'all make sure to record this. I'm about to eat a scorpion. And they're like, no, you're not. So I grab this thing and I throw it in. And they got their phones pulled up. But guess what? They didn't record it. And so I said, bartender, give me another scorpion. <laughs> he gave me a second one. Because I had to get it on video, you know. I mean, and so it's like a mixed... It's like a mixed thing on Instagram on the comments. My grandmother's like, what are you doing? And then, then, I, then my cousin's like, you're a real man. That makes you a real man. And everybody's just going back and forth like, gross. Ugh. You know, there's <laughs> mixed emotions about it. But, you know, the truth is, is that it really didn't taste like anything except for tequila. <laughs> and it was crunchy. That's the kind of weird thing. That was weird. That was kind of weird. Oh, you could hear it. I know. See, because we were talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't see that one. Yeah, yeah, y'all should. Yeah, you should. <laughs> I'll have to <laughs> anyway. All right, everybody, let's all give it up for Dylan Carmichael. Thank you.